welcome to part 2 of this video. In part 1 we looked into sending MIDI from Tractor to Ableton via the internal MIDI port. If you haven't seen part 1 you may not be able to follow everything that I'm currently doing so I do encourage you to check out part 1 of this uh, video. And in this video we'll add a MIDI controller or MIDI keyboard into the mix sending messages to Tractor and then forwarding those messages to uh, the internal MIDI port and respond to them in Ableton Live. Now I do say forward because uh, most MIDI controllers will not allow you to control two applications at the same time, so Tractor and Ableton Live. Having a quick look at the MIDI mappings in Ableton uh, you may recall that I had assigned CC91 to the crossfader and that was sent from uh, Tractor. Now if I look at my preferences, the MIDI sync tab, I have an Oxygen 8 USB keyboard and if I enable that remote control, I just happen to know that CC91 is one of the knobs on my keyboard, so if I now turn that knob you can see that the crossfader is responding to that knob. Now in Tractor, let's say I want to use that same knob to move the crossfader. Go into Control Manager, I'm going to add a new entry, a generic MIDI keyboard going to set the import to my uh, USB uh, MIDI keyboard. Then I'm going to add an assignment for the mixer, the crossfader, and click MIDI Learn and turn the knob and nothing happens. Normally you would see here the MIDI message that comes in, but it doesn't. And that's because the MIDI keyboard is currently locked to Ableton Live and I cannot use it in Tractor. And this basically works on a first come first serve kind of thing, meaning that if I start up Ableton first it will use the keyboard and Tractor will not be able to use it, but if I start up Tractor first and then start up Ableton, uh, Tractor will be able to use it, but Ableton will not. Now since Tractor has the ability to assign MIDI messages manually, what we can do is use the keyboard with Tractor and then send out custom messages through the LUBE uh, internal MIDI port and have Ableton respond to those messages. So let's get started. I'm going to close everything down, including Tractor and Ableton. I have now restarted Tractor and it's the only thing running, so Ableton is not running. Going into the controller manager, select that generic MIDI entry that I added earlier, the crossfader, and now click on MIDI Learn, turn the knob on my keyboard, and there you have it, CC91. So if I close this and now check what happens, see the crossfader now responds to the knob on my MIDI keyboard. Perfect. Now back in Ableton Live I'm going to disable the MIDI keyboard and as you can see it now turns up as orange. That means that Ableton is not able to connect to it. But that's okay. I don't care. Uh, so make sure we are not listening or responding to the keyboard. And that way it doesn't matter if I start up Ableton or Tractor first. And make sure that Ableton is listening for input from the internal MIDI. So enable all these three just like in uh, part one of this video. Have a look at the MIDI mappings. There's still a mapping here for CC91. So what happens now is if I turn the knob on the keyboard, Tractor responds to it and also forwards that message as we set it up in the part one of this video, the crossfader 
goes out to CC91. So I'm listening input CC91 and I'm sending that same message out. So let's turn the knob on the keyboard. As you can see the crossfader moves in Ableton. If I go into tractor it moves there as well. Bingo! Now you may wonder what happens if you use the external audio in tractor in which case the crossfader disappears. So, well, let's find out. Let's go into output routing, switch from internal to external. Now, DAC A is going to 1, 2, DAC B, 3, 4. I'm not going to use DAC C and D. So, let's keep it at that, close it. And as you can see, my crossfader is gone now. Question is though, does it still work in Ableton? If I turn the knob, as you can see, nothing happens. So yes, I'm actually turning the knob, but unfortunately nothing happens. So it seems that because the crossfader is no longer uh, available in Tractor, it also ignores the incoming message. So let's go back to the control manager, um, select the MIDI clock entry. I'm going to remove everything that is here. Let's now go back to my generic MIDI, which is the keyboard. And let me quickly rename that as well. So, Oxygen 8. Okay, so the entry is there for the crossfader, but it no longer works. So, get rid of it. Bye bye. Set the output port to Loopy internal MIDI. So, in port is the keyboard, out port is the internal MIDI port gonna add an entry and this one is a special one called the modifier select modifier one it's currently not mapped click on MIDI learn and I'm now going to turn that knob on my keyboard which is 91 and let's now change the interaction mode to relative lower the rotary sensitivity to about around 30 then add an output so no input but an output modifier one and map this we cannot do a middle learn so we have to do this manually map this to the message 91 so basically message coming in from the midi keyboard message 91 and i'm sending it out as the same message 91 now let's check in ableton and see what happens if I now turn that knob on the keyboard. As you can see, my crossfader is moving. So even without a crossfader available in Tractor, I'm now able to forward the MIDI message from the keyboard from Tractor into Ableton. And of course, just like I did in part one of this video, I can still send messages from Tractor that respond to um, functionality within Tractor. So like the play buttons from sample deck C and D, I can still send those out like I did previously just by going into sample deck, deck play, assign it a message, I think I used something like 110 and so on. But I'm not going to repeat all that, you can check it out in part 1 if you haven't already. Saving the best for last, there's another way of doing this. And if you look at this picture, you'll notice that things have switched around a bit. A MIDI controller or a MIDI keyboard sending MIDI message to the internal MIDI port and we'll enable that in Jack. The internal MIDI port will then send out messages and we will listen to those messages from both Ableton Live and Tractor at the same time. So as you can see from the internal MIDI port messages going to Ableton Live and going to Tractor and of course we can still sync the clock from Tractor and Ableton and of course still send out MIDI messages. So let's start by setting up Jack and what we need to do is listen for or enable the MIDI capabilities in Jack. I have an entry for that called Jack MIDI. What's important here is that I added a parameter to the server prefix, which is dash x, then win mme. 
going to increase the frames period because the tractor seems to be very unstable at low latency settings. Other than that, everything's pretty much default. I still use the playback only. So most important thing here is enabling the MIDI. Then save, click on OK. Now start. And once it's running, open up the connections. Click on the MIDI tab. And now you can see there is a few entries there. Unfortunately, the names that are displayed here are not very descriptive. So you kind of will have to figure out what is what. In my case, Capture 1 here is my um, internal MIDI port. This is my uh, MIDI keyboard. This is the Microsoft wavetable, built-in wavetable. This is the output or input rather uh, from the internal MIDI port and I think this is my MIDI keyboard as well. So what I want to do is send the keyboard to the internal MIDI. That's all I need to do. In Tractor, check the output routing. I switched back to internal because I want to have the crossfader available again. In the controller manager, I removed everything we did previously except for the MIDI clock, which is still sending out to the loop BE internal MIDI port with uh, no assignments. So there I have my crossfader again, and I now want to control that with the keyboard. So going to the control manager, I'm going to add a new generic MIDI entry. I'm going to rename this to loop BE like that. I'm going to set the import to loop BE internal MIDI, the output to none. Let's go ahead and add an input assignment for our mixer crossfader. There it is. Click on learn and Turn the knob on the MIDI keyboard, as you can see, it's still CC91. I'm going to enable the soft takeover. Close this and see if the crossfader moves here. Yeah. So now let's move over to Ableton Live. And quickly look at the preferences, the MIDI sync. As you can see, my keyboard is not available because it is being used by Jack now. The input for Luby E internal MIDI is still the same, so everything enabled, track, sync, remote. So basically, Ableton will respond to messages coming in through the internal MIDI port. Close this. And I now want to assign the same knob that I'm using in Tractor to control the crossfader to the crossfader in Ableton. So I'm going to click on MIDI, click on the crossfader, and then turn that knob. So CC91 is now assigned to the crossfader. Let's check it out. Moving it. As you can see, it moves in Ableton. Switching to Tractor, it moves in Tractor as well. And of course, just like before, I can now still send MIDI messages out of Tractor and have Ableton re respond to them. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and do that. So just like in part one of the video, I've assigned MIDI messages to the first two buttons of deck C. And now I will map those in Ableton. And rather than mapping them to an audio track, I'm going to map them to a group of audio tracks. So group A and group B. Go into MIDI mode, select the play button for the group, then go into tractor hit the first one there you have it mapped now select the play button for group B go into tractor hit that button and it is now assigned to group B so exiting MIDI mapping if I now go back to tractor 
I can now start the whole group by hitting this button. So this will launch group A, this will launch group B, and of course I can still use the crossfader. So let's have a quick listen. So I hope this gives you an idea of what is possible with MIDI mapping between Ableton, Tractor and using an internal MIDI port with Jack for Windows. Thanks for watching.